Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is the Sunday Art Show and this week we're at West Wickham Park in, uh, I think that's in, where is that? That's in Buckinghamshire I think um, and this is celebrating episode two of Landscape Artist of the Year. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of a different technique to what I did last week. I'm going to start out with a couple of Sharpie pens, uh, a light blue and a kind of a, a medium or semi-dark blue. I've got my A2 watercolour paper and to be honest with you, the, f the stills I was able to grab from the TV show, I didn't find the scene particularly inspiring. So what I'm going to do is actually focus on some swans and then put the kind of scenery in the background and we'll see how that goes. So let's begin by putting a swan in here towards the bottom right. Now, if any of you saw the videos I did a few months ago for the Animal Alphabet Challenge, um, you'll know that I did a series of videos drawing animals using a black Sharpie pen. And the challenge of doing this is that the Sharpie puts down a permanent mark. So you've essentially got one chance to get your drawing uh, correct. So I may go quiet here and there in order to uh, increase the chances of that happening. But I'll, I'll also be using kind of broken lines, as you can see already, because that gives me just a little bit of leeway if I do make a mistake. But that's not looking too bad at the moment for the, for the neck of the swan. And then the body comes up here. And I think I've kind of taken the water line is somewhere about there. It's a little higher. I went a little bit too low with that line, but we'll hide that later with a bit of luck anyway. Um, and there's the tail. There we go. So we've got a rough silhouette of a swan. Now I'm going to put a second one in. Now, if you happen to see the um, if you happen to see the show, Ty, one of the, the head judge renowned artist you know he said he was saying he doesn't like seeing swans and stuff it's all it's all be done before and then he said um although you know maybe somebody one day uh or maybe somebody on that particular day could produce uh, a painting of a swan in a style he hasn't seen before well I, I don't know that i can guarantee to do that but i'm going to try and uh put a little bit of an, an unusual style into proceedings at some point in this painting so this one's going to be a little further away. Neck comes down here. And then it's at a slight angle compared to this one, which is obviously side on. And again, you've got the little tufty tail there as well. So I want to put a third one in, perhaps off in the distance over here or here. Um, but if I if I do do that, I'm going to come back and do that later. So we'll you know we'll see how it goes. Okay. So now the question is where to place the building in my composition here, the little folly. Um, and in my reference, the the actual distant waterline would be up here somewhere. But I'm going to imagine that I'm actually you know, perhaps crouching down on the on the riverbank. Um, so I'm going to bring the, the distant bank down a little lower. Something like that. And then I'm going to switch to the lighter blue. And I'm going to position, just trying to think where to put this thing. Yeah, I'm going to just position the folly off to the side here, I think. So if it's up on the, the bank or around about this sort of height, I think this is a, might be a pale violet, this other Sharpie. Um, OK, so. The height of the building is approximately the same height as that lead swan, but if I put it that high, I think it's going to kind of get crowded out. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. Um, and then compared to its height, 
the width of the building is roughly one and a half so it's going to be a, coming about there something of that order and then obviously there's a curve here just put in a light line for the roof which I've made a little too steep I think so let's make that a little shallower and then I won't put in too much detail in terms of the structure at the moment because I want to keep things fairly loose what I'm going to do now is come in with some watercolour So I'm going to begin by just applying a little bit of clean water with my ra uh, round mop brush and then on my palette in the central well I've just got some Silurian blue here okay and what we'll do is just put a fairly pale wash of this colour going all the way from left to right in fairly smooth brush strokes just a bit to establish a pale sky. Now around the, the building the foliage is fairly dark so we'll get to that darkness aspect in a moment but I'm just going to add some uh, cadmium yellow to the mixture I just put down and what we'll do is while that sky is still wet we'll just begin to let that green and yellow mingle with the still wet sky and I can apply this wash around the, the outline of the building that I've put down already A bit more water and I can vary the amount of blue and yellow I've got in the, the paint I'm putting down so we can go a little darker over here and let this wash do its own thing Try and keep the swans reasonably free of paint. Uh, I've got no qualms about coming in with a little white acrylic later on if I need to. And then uh, this area here, the kind of um, the riverbank or whatever it is, that the, the, little, the little kind of hillock that the, the building is on, I'm just going to sweep through a burst of very pale yellowy green and then before that dries with a, a damp paper towel I'm just going to lift out some of that where the swan is and while we're about it let's uh, let's lift that little drip out as well now for the water I'm actually coming in with a mixture of the little less dilute of the Silurian blue but I've also picked up some ultramarine blue that I've got there as well and what I'm going to do is just whip this across the the paper here really fast so in doing that that kind of automatically creates a little bit of sparkle on the water now obviously in doing that I've also gone right through my swans now there's two ways to approach this I could just yeah, we were talking about depicting swans in an unusual way well the swans are moving so I might kind of keep my initial instinct is to kind of lift out some of that but I think I'm going to keep that uh, I've used that technique before sort of a semi-transparent swan and also a semi-transparent cow as well I'll try and find those images and put them up on screen for you um, but the idea is because the animals moving you can it, it sort of represents just a passing moment in time so that's my thinking for the moment anyway and then what I'm going to do is grab some more of that blue but with more of the ultramarine in and then put a, another burst down there um, to give some sparkle on the water now before I start adding any shadows to the background I just want to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of sort of pinky orange 
So I'm just grabbing some alizarin from a painting I did the other day. It's kind of dried out a little, but um, with a little bit of uh, hydration there, we can we can get that. And then I've just added some of the the cad yellow to that. And this colour won't be quite quite right, but it'll be it'll be okay for the painting. So I'm just rolling the brush over this little section here, just so that we get a little bit of variety of colour within the foliage. And then again, just thinking about the colour scheme of the of the painting in terms of design more than what's actually in front of me. Just mixing that up into a bit of a deeper purple and just introducing some of this on the right here. Now if I get a few cauliflowers in here because I've let the underlying paint partially dry, that's absolutely fine. Cauliflowers I find often help create a sense of foliage. foliage trees and hedges and so on. Okay, and now what I can do is I need to grab some more ultramarine blue. So I've got my ultramarine blue here. I'm going to add a little of that alizarin. Get a nice deep purple. And we'll start to introduce some dark shadows behind this building here. But at the same time, I'm going to be, you know, keeping some little gaps in the shadow and not making things too regular. Now I've got a little bit of a run happening here, as you can see. So what we'll try and do is incorporate that into the, into the drawing. So I'm going to whip my brush along the line I've already put down with the, um, with the Sharpie. Okay, and then if, I, if I'm just gentle with it, I think I can quite probably use this as a shadow colour. I just make use of that little bead of colour, which accidentally ended up where it was. And then just squinting at the building, I've got one, two, three, four, five clear gaps between pillars. So let's see if we can put those in. So we've got one going down there that's reasonably narrow. We've got a slightly wider one here. And a wider one again. So we're up to three. Another wide one. And then a narrower one on the left. And notice I've let the shadow stop on those two central ones. Uh, OK, but back to our manoeuvring with trees. So let's uh, again fire in some deep shadow here. And then things are reasonably dark along the water's edge there. Could kind of cheat a bit and use that to silhouette around part of the swan. Some dark shadow in there. Dark along the water's edge. dark in here. Now I'm going back to my ultramarine blue but grabbing some of the cadmium yellow now to, to have a, a deeper green. Okay so what we'll also do if I can find it is um, we'll just gently mist that top half of the painting with the water spray as well. So I'll tap in some deeper greens now and again what I'm going to do is Use this deeper green to highlight, increase the contrast basically between the top of this little hillock and 
the background and then I can just look and see what okay I can correct my drawing of that swan head a little there You know, just in, just vary the colour of these shadows. So there's a little extra dimension to the colours and the textures that we're putting down. So rolling the brush, see that that little loop I've got there and that little hole. It's a really easy way to create uh, that ra ragged edge you get you get from tree lines. So I'm putting some dark colour around that pale pink that I put down earlier, just to enhance that. And then I want a different colour here as well. So, so I want a little bit of a different colour and different texture there. So I've just grabbed a flat brush, fairly large, just dipping that into some pure uh, Silurian blue. And let's just drag some of that across the pale green that I've got there. That's just going to create, a, you know, a different texture to the textures that I've got everywhere else within this background region. And I'm just I'm going to leave this side as it is, but I think I'm just going to very gently mist the left hand side with a little bit of water just to you know, help it move around a little bit. Now the first layer is almost complete, but uh, with a view to bring the whole painting up in, in kind of one movement, as it were, one go, um, I want to put some of that deliciously dark green that appears in the foreground of the water in. So coming in with some ultramarine blue, back to my big round mop brush, a little bit of the Silurian, keeping the paint reasonably thick here, and then um, I'm grabbing just a little bit of the yellow And that's reasonably close in colour, I would say. Now, what I want to do here is use this to start to pick out part of the reflection of this swan. But without, you know, being too heavy handed about it. So. So there's a there's a start. Um, we can put in a little bit here as well. And then. Let's use that to outline part of the other swan's tail. So, you know, not too much. Um, and then we'll do the same over here. We'll just use a little bit there. And a little bit there as well. We'll do a similar treatment here on the other swan. So I'm actually going to come in quite fast from the right, but then then kind of stop a little early and we'll put a blast of that darker colour down there, a little more solid than I have elsewhere.
And then what I'm going to do is just suggest the reflection of these shadows directly below here, but just, you know, just in part. So there's another one there. We'll kind of wiggle that one a bit. There's another bit of shadow down there, perhaps. A bit of reflect, reflection of shadow, I should say. Whoops. Oh, darn. So that was a mistake. <laughs> um, let's, we'll fix that in just a second with a bit of luck. And another another hint of shadow there. And then while the, I, want, I want to keep this bottom bit more on the bit on the right, more or less as it is, but I'm just going to spray that to break the surface tension of the little bead I've got there and break up some of those little reflections I put in. And if that, those trickles, that's fine. Uh, I'm happy with that. But what I might do is just see if I can lift off with a damp finger. Yeah, that's softened that. I'm probably going to darken that area anyway. And then I think really the only thing I want to do now before I let the whole thing dry, you know, before moving on to the kind of the second stage of the painting, is to, I think I just want to break up those little trickles there with my paper towel. I quite like that going over the, the dry brush. So I've broken up both of those, but perhaps I'll just break up the left one and the others there. And that's starting to look a little more liquid-like, I feel. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry now and we'll come back when it's completely dry. All right, well, the painting is dry now. I'm quite happy with the looseness of the background and the little building. I like the looseness of the reflections in the water here. The dark, dark green that I intended to put down here, for some reason, it looked I'm sure it was a very dark green on my palette, but it looks blue. So I'm going to go over some of that in a moment. And I also made a mistake by filling in here. I went with that error line that I had before. So that's actually one of the disadvantages of doing a preliminary sketch is that um, you can sort of accidentally trust an, uh, a mistake you made. So I'm just lifting out some of that. Whoops. Um, just lifting out some of that with uh, a damp paper towel. And uh, hopefully that will help improve things uh, later on. But we'll we'll come back to the swans, oh, obviously, in a bit. But what I want to do next is just add a little bit of warm colour in the building and then put that into the reflection here as well. And then make this uh, foreground water darker and greener. All right, well, I've just switched to a little flat synthetic brush and mixed up an orangey brown with um, cadmium yellow, a touch of the alizarin, and then the, the merest hint of blue. So uh, let's, um, let's use that on this building here. Now, I don't want to go too crazy with this colour, but it's simply to just echo something a little bit closer to the true colour that is uh, is there in this little pavilion. And the flat brush will allow me to just get the shapes of the gaps between the pillars a little more regular. I, d I don't actually mind the shapes I've got too much actually. I, th I think it works fairly well for an impressionist uh, rendering of the situation. And then what I want to do is transfer some of this colour. I'm just going to spray the central well of the palette there with some with some water because I want it to be much more wishy-washy. And I'll add a little bit of the blue in there as well just to reduce the vibrancy of this colour. So I've got a bit there. I'm going to come down to let's get the, the distance roughly right. Yeah, it's going to be about there. And again, and 
And again, I'll spray that with the water bottle just to move the reflection around a bit, let it do its own thing. Now, keeping that same colour on my brush, I just pulled that through a little bit of the uh, Silurian Blue I had there and added a touch of the Alizarin. Nothing too much. Let's just get a little more in there, perhaps. So it's kind of a, a grey purple. I just want to add a quick sweep of this on the rooftop. And again, I'm just going to spray that with the water just lightly, just to soften that little wash there. Just tap the, the edge of that with my finger, just to soften that line. And again, another quick, just move it around a little bit more. And then um, let's grab a little bit more of the blue that I happen to have here in the central well. Add a little bit more of the alizarin. And we'll put just uh, a hint of shadow there at the base. A little hint here and here. And then if I grab some a little bit of ultramarine blue and put that into the mixture as well, then I can also depict some of the windows we've got. But again, I'm not going to be going into any detail. So there's one there. A little more uh, of a detailed depiction on that central one. And then there's another one peeking through here. And I think that should almost be enough. Um, right, so next I think I'm going to work on this water. Before I do that, though, I've just looked at this roof again, and I, I just want to, to lift off some of what I put down, just to, to lighten it up a little. So I don't mind a bit of that dark colour. I've now come to the conclusion, but the... Uh, perhaps went a little heavy-handed. I may add a little flash of white acrylic there later. OK, now, now I'm going to mix up some green. Now, although it's a fairly uh, large area, I'm going to stick with this relatively small flat brush I've got here. So I'm just grabbing some of the ultramarine blue. And then let's grab some of the cadmium yellow. That's a pretty good uh, dark green there. Just a little spritz of water, just because I, you know, I want it to be a little bit transparent. And what I'm going to do is try and preserve some of the sparkle I've got here, but at the same time, you know, darken certain areas. So I'm going to come across here with this colour. It still looks pretty blue rather than green. So let's put a bit more yellow in there, which is sort of the wrong direction in terms of tone, but. Oh, that's more like it. Right. So. And now I want to come across here. Up to the neck of the swan. And then I just want to fill in this little bit here. To help. Pick out the silhouette of the swan. And in doing that, I've retained this speckled blue on the swan's neck, which I quite like. But I've, you know created a distinction between the water and the swan there. So OK, uh, I'm going to leave most of that white area, but for this bit here, I'm going to come in quite quick, but stop at the bit I just wiped off. And then 
we can darken this area and again I'll use the same trick I come in quick but even though the the water's blue here I'm going to just leave a little gap so perhaps the the reflection of the swan's neck is just more subdued in that area let's get a bit more paint on the brush uh, we can put a flash of this green in here and also what i can do is i've got a little mark of brown or, or red there or something which uh, is a mistake it's splashed on there over the blue so what i'll do is i'll I'll cover that up with this green. And then again, just drag the green across to meet up with the other swan. Now, I like this area so much, I don't want to do too much more to it just yet. So I think for now, I'm going to leave the application of green at that. Now, one of the problems I've got with taking my reference photo from a still from the TV is that there's very little contrast in the image I've got of the swan. So I'm going to have to use I'm going to have to look very closely, basically, and just use a little bit of imagination to uh, get this right. So, so what I've got here is a purple, which is simply mixed up from ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson. So I'm going to use that to with the same flat brush just begin to put in some fairly uh, gentle shadows I would say and also just do a little bit of line work here and there to begin to bring these swans to life a little more there's a little shadow on the neck that the, the lower lower part of the head is casting uh, and then there isn't that much more visible but I need to do something to break things up from the water a bit although as I said I think towards the start of the video I quite like the, the transparency of animals in some of my paintings um, so let's, uh, let's just put a bit of shadow there and a bit down there in the reflection and then we've got a leg just peeped peeping out of the water here that needs to be a bit darker so I'll just um, grab a bit more of the the blue and the oh, I need to get a bit more paint hang on a sec okay here we go back in with the a rather stronger version of that same purple uh, we can just put a little little mark there in the water and so that's starting to to bring the swan to life but it's you know it's a pretty subtle swan um, now i'm going to move over to the other animal so same idea coming in with this purple let's get a little bit more alizarin in there and on this one there's a dark area on the end of the beak or the bill whatever the appropriate phrase is I can go over that marker line that I put down earlier. It's a little dark patch here at the top of the, the bill and then the dark area around the eyes. And once again, there's a little shadow cast by the underside of the head on the neck. So we can put that in fairly carefully. And this animal's got a bit more of a shadow that I can see in the reference coming down. The, let me just make things a little more dilute in terms of the paint. Uh, coming down the right hand side of the neck. So I'm going to try and put that in. So I'll put a bit of a line there at the top. But then as I come down towards the bottom, I'm just going to sweep the brush to the left a little more. Just so that I get a variation in terms of line and shadow there. That seems to have worked, re worked reasonably well. Again, I've got a little leg peeking out here, but I won't make that quite as dark as um, we saw previously. But again, I'll just put a little flash of colour reflected in the water. And then perhaps just a little burst here on the underside of the animal. 
and there and that's that brush stroke is looking a little too regular so I'm just coming in with I uh, just washed the brush it's going to lift off some of that there and we'll extend that I don't want the line across the bottom of the animal to be too continuous that's that's working reasonably well now I can continue that wash into the water a little bit so that there's um, some continuity between animal and reflection and that's working reasonably well so returning to the other animal the other swan on the right I think I'm going to do something similar and again just a little bit of water there to move things around Just grabbing a paper towel and what I'll do is just break up that reflection just a bit so that it's not quite so obvious that I've just dragged the brush horizontally through horizontally across the paper there all right well now I've just got some fresh cadmium yellow another flat synthetic brush this one's slightly slightly narrower than the other one and I'm just grabbing a little bit gradually adding a little bit of alizarin to get a fairly pale orange and the paint's a little bit thicker than I've used previously but what we're going to do is Just dry brush a little bit of that onto the bill and then we'll do the same on this one. So now I've got a little bit of orange here and then here and here. So that kind of hopefully carries the eye across the painting. I've switched over to a small round brush now and mixed up some ultramarine blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson. The paint's a little bit thicker than I used previously with this color. But what I want to do is just come in and refine this animal here, which is a little closer. and just put a little bit more detail around the head not you know not too much but just enough to make it look a little more swan like Now the main problem I've got here is the upper line of the orange is, isn't too bad. That's, that's pretty well drawn. But because I've got this little halo of white, that's distorting the look of the bill. So I just need to put a very light wash in above that. So I'm going to try and do that now. So to start off with that, I've gone back to my clean brush and I've just rinsed it out not too thoroughly. I'm just going to kind of mix up a little bit of a dirty green by just taking some of that purple I've got there and putting it into some of the yellow and what I'm going to do is just begin by putting a little distant shoreline in there just to see how that looks in terms of color and that's not too bad uh, so what I'll do is we'll see if I can just overlay some of this color to kill that bit of white and now of course I want to try and hide the fact that I've just done that so um, need to make things a little more 
a little wetter, I think, because it doesn't have to be a particularly dark colour, but it does need to be um, non-white. So I'll carry that on around the head of the swan. We'll change the colour a little bit as we go over here. Again, I'll come in with the spray bottle just on the left to begin with. I don't want to move that stuff on the right too much. Well, we'll give it a go, see if I can get away with it. I don't, I don't want to move the painting I've done on the swan head, just the, just the background. And at the moment, apart from that trickle into the water, let's grab the paper towel. That's sort of working, sort of not working. I think I need to let that dry before I go any further. I actually decided against letting it completely dry because I just I just want to sweep, try to see if I can sweep that wash closer to the beak. And I, I'm still struggling to get that outline right for some reason. So let's go to a little more of a dark, a little bit of a darker version of what I had there and starting over here on the right let's grab a bit more a bit more ultramarine blue That's working a little better. Now this little bobble here I've got in the neck, it, it breaks up the line of the neck, but for some reason I quite like it. I don't know whether I'm thinking the right thing there. So I'm going to leave that for the moment. Um, but let's... Uh, no, perhaps I will. Let's, let's remove that. Yeah, that's working better, I think. It looks more like a swan head now. All right, well, I've switched to some pure titanium white uh, interactive acrylic now and I've just got a slightly more frayed flat brush and as you can see I'm just dragging that paint out across the palette and what I'm going to do is just you know very sparingly or perhaps not quite that sparingly because nothing went onto the paper but um, just very sparingly add a few flashes of white with a little bit of texture in the brush stroke if I can get it to work there we go that's a bit better just to define the line of the back of the swan a little bit. And also just hide the outline here and there as well. I really quite like the transparency of the animal that I've got going here. Um, so I just I actually want to make that this bit of white a little more opaque because I picked up some of the underlying uh, watercolor, the green. So I just want to put a little bit of a thicker layer on there uh, and. 
that's just a little under here as well. And then I think a touch on the back of this one, like that. Perhaps a little on the tail there. And I think I'm pretty much done. So, so what I've created is like very loose background. There's a, the buildings done in a minimalist way. And now that I think about it, a little touch of white here, just on top of the roof. As mentioned earlier, um, and then the swans and the water are also very loose. And the idea being, as I mentioned earlier, I've got these swans being almost transparent because they're just kind of moving through the scene. So that's kind of the thinking for this particular painting. So the finished pick, um, I really like the way I feel that it, it looks as though these windows and this orange wall are recessed behind the pillars. And although the pillars are, you know, effectively they're poorly drawn, you know, because I just drew the negative spaces, I think the overall effect is still quite pleasing. I think there's an argument to be made that I could have made this background foliage uh, simpler. But if I just put sort of simpler silhouettes, it would have perhaps looked too distant. And I kind of like how as a whole, there's such looseness going on that the viewer has to, or at least I have to work, just work a little bit to kind of work out exactly what's going on. And I really like that for this painting. I've already mentioned that I, I like the swans. Um, so on the whole, a little bit of an experimental piece for me, but, uh, you know, pretty happy um, with how it turned out. Um, if you'd like to take a closer work at some of the brushwork, you can click the link in the description below. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.